Okay, at this point, we're still at the physical layer, uh, but we start talking about bands. Band, width, base band, broad band. Um, and, okay, we have talked about multiplexing, uh, using the, the signaling and, and particularly changes in the signaling to carry and transmit data. Um, but now we start to get into, um, well, uh, some aspects of, of practical and economic considerations and, and some uh, aspects of, you know, what do you do in terms of improving the um, communication. And we have um, uh, considerations of how you know uh what are what are we going to do because we've we've got uh you know a laser we've got a cable we've got a uh microwave tower um how do we use this most effectively and of course the the answer is you want to send multiple conversations or multiple streams of data you want to have multiple users as many as possible using this one communications facility <clears throat> so um, you can you can send uh, well uh, you know, I suppose first the first thing is you can divide it up by time um, you know everybody gets a period of time and and you know you define the periods of time and when your time is over then the next person gets it and you know it sort of rolls around eventually to you again um that is known as time division multiplexing you divide the uh the the channel up into time segments but uh that's not the only way you can do it now we can do um, different frequencies on the same cable. We can we can send multiple frequencies in the same way that uh, you know you play a chord on the piano. Uh, so we can send different tones, different frequencies down the same cable. So we can have frequency division multiplexing. Um, and so you know we have a a certain range of frequencies we can send and we can assign each person a different frequency. Uh, now, at this point, we come back to the bands. Uh, Base band is, is basically you use a single frequency uh, on your communications medium. Uh, broadband means that you are using either multiple frequencies or a, a range a frequency range that is suitable to this particular uh, uh, medium. Now, uh, okay, so we've got time division multiplexing and we've got frequency division multiplexing. So we can divide the, uh, the system up. And then we uh, again have to start thinking of adversaries. Our adversaries may be listening in and how do we how do we prevent them from listening in now if we are using a single frequency they only have to listen on a uh, given frequency if if we are using multiple frequencies they've got to listen on a range of frequencies so that makes it harder for them um but our i, I mean listening isn't the only thing they can do they can also try and jam us and so they are broadcasting on our frequency, so we can't transmit. And again, if we are doing that um, on a single frequency, they only have to jam a single frequency. If uh, we are using multiple frequencies, they have to jam a range of frequencies, multiple frequencies. So, uh, back in the Second World War... Hedy Lamar, yes, that Hedy Lamar, and uh, a pianist, got the idea from um, the paper roll in a player piano that you use multiple 
frequencies at different times. You jump between frequencies, frequency hopping. Um, and in general, we tend to refer to this now as spread spectrum. And of course, now uh, it makes it much more difficult for the enemy to listen in because you're jumping around on the frequency and they have to be listening uh, on all kinds of different frequencies and then patching together what they hear. Um, and if you're doing multiple things, this we, we now come up with um, oh, uh, CDMA? Uh, code division? No. Um, yeah, code division. Multiplexing. And um, by giving people a code, it you sort of have a grid of the time periods that people can use for uh, communicating and the frequencies. And, and so for every uh, grid period, um, you know, your code tells you which of those frequencies and times you can transmit in. Um, now, again, this makes it harder for uh, an adversary to eavesdrop. It makes it um, harder for them to, uh, uh, to jam what you're doing. Um, and again, you know, they, you know, this is not the, uh, the only things that they can do. They can try, uh, not just, um, uh, noise and interference, um, jamming, um, eavesdropping, but also modification that they can, uh, try and inject false traffic into your communications, um, and therefore confuse the issue. They can try and, uh, uh, you know, hijack a session um, and, and, again, confuse uh, your communications, your, your planning, your, uh, uh, your plans. So, uh, this, um, you know, we've got, uh, well, I suppose I should go into it, that... Um, the uh, code division multiplexing is much more efficient as well. Um, you can put much more traffic over uh, a code division multiplexing system than you can over either time or frequency division multiplexing. So um, it's, it's also more useful in that regard. So it's more practical, more economical. So, um, yeah, and we will... Uh, deal with some additional issues.